<laughs> what? Oh, wow, look who snuck in. Oh, <laughs> see, I told you he's a magic man, bro. That that was impressive. Wow. Kevin Lyon. What you time are, is it, Kevin? What time is it? How many thousands of miles away are you, and what time is it there? It's uh, 2.30 a.m. Oh, London so you're time. just getting started. Okay. Oh, yeah. Bars just, you know, Maybe. Bars are closed. I can't take the train anywhere, so I have to have a beer at home. Even the Tesco's closed, Michael. Wow. <laughs> and, wh and where are you coming to us from, Kevin? London, uh, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> uh, London, England. Wow, that is impressive. Across the I'm, pond. Good day, mate. <laughs> from one all from one all to another. Good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting all of our time zones mixed up here. <laughs> Well, you know what? Only one time zone matters. It's all. It's always five o'clock somewhere. Cheers. That's right. Oh my Cheers. goodness. Hey, we're glad you're here, Kevin. Yes, yeah. that is awesome. Kevin Lyon from all. Of, you know, it, it's funny. You, you just sneak in here uh, regularly in California, and you sneak in <laughs> in Europe. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I think. I think maybe. Fingers crossed. I don't. I don't know if it's if the show goes on there, but uh, will you be doing a run in on the Alaska uh, trip potentially? I, I hope if we do Alaska, I hope so. If I, oh, if I, okay. I, I, I mean, if I pull that stuff off. <laughs> wow, Kevin is really weathered. He's had a tough week. You can tell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, mind you, I, I I literally was like nodding off on my on my bed. Well, an hour ago, so I set my alarm just in case. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I I want to I want to play something. Uh, oh, oh, shoot! Did I I didn't? Even, oh, darn it! Do you not I say I, what I say? Yeah, no, I have it, and I and I forgot to upload it. Oh, no, no, no! Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I still oh, have it. No, oh, I did. I did. I uh, thank goodness I put it in. I, I tricked myself. <laughs> I did it. So <laughs> let's, let's actually take a look at uh, Kevin was at a uh, he was in England for the England uh, World Cup game. So um, it was against Senegal, right? Yeah, it's the uh, the round of 16. So I like if I knew I wouldn't be able to just walk into any pub. So down to a local hall with a few hundred Brits. And yeah. <laughs> So let, 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 let's, let's go to the tape. Thrown out right at the end. <laughs> if you saw the one where it turned sideways, I'm literally ducking because beer literally people were throwing beers up in the air when they scored a goal. Like we got like like my scarf and my hat, and not my hat. No, I had a beanie on. Luckily that day, not this hat. My scarf and beanie definitely. I definitely smelt like. But wait, what I normally smell like probably beer. <laughs> How's the baseball over there, buddy? I don't. I don't know what that is. What's baseball? <laughs> oh, you mean the, the cricket? <laughs> cricket. I saw some cricket. On the yes, I saw some cricket. On the I have no idea what 562 to two means, but they still get it before I go home. They're playing a five-day test game, uh, and it was a big deal uh, from yes. what I heard. So, like, whatever. Uh, that's great. In the, the, the the pub had a sparse attendance for it. Oh, really? I mean, oh. it was you know what for two o'clock on a Tuesday. Our time, so you guys are still asleep. <laughs> so I don't wow. know. <laughs> well, that is crazy. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. And also, Ian from If Sports Card is back. So let me give you some formal introductions. Let's do this right. Oh, yeah. That's right. 
Yes. Welcome to another Tuesday night. It is the weekly baseball brew crew podcast. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and low, keeping baseball history alive. One craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us, please give us a like and a follow. Uh, and if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend, hold them down, make them subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 and 1,000 followers, um, and uh, you, we, we need you. We need your support. And uh, all we want for Christmas is 500 followers, okay? Uh, 500 total more. <laughs> That's it. A lot to ask. That's not a lot to ask. It's not too much to ask. Come on. Um, all right. So here's the lineup card for today. It's a full one. <laughs> First, uh, our guest in the leadoff spot, fresh off 73 episodes of top 10 sports card pulls of the week and 140 rounds of wife pack wars with Nikki on his YouTube channel. Please welcome Ian from if sports cards. Thank you for being here again. Hey guys, thanks for having me again. I am happy to fill in for Kevin, but I'm more happy that he is here with us today. So should be a fun episode. I saw Mel Ott's on the list. I'm excited about that. So awesome. Let's, uh, let's drink some beer and learn about baseball. Yeah, your new microphone sounds amazing. It uh, sounds great. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> those, uh, those dulcet tones to go with your good looks. How about that? I'll take it. Total take package. It. Total You package. guys know how to make a, a man blush. You know that? <laughs> and what a man. What a man. Salt, salt. Oh, what thanks. is it? Salt and pepper. What a song about you. Oh, you mean, you mean the guy above me. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> Not you this week, Kevin. Stop it. <laughs> Next is our VP of content development here at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. What's up, gentlemen? What's up, everyone in the Baseball Brew Crew Brew Universe? Happy to be here on a Tuesday night. It's a full house, uh, but the best house. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Next, he's a field correspondent and he's senior research analyst. <laughs> Coming all the way from London, England, it is Kevin Lyon. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Glad to just do this surprise run-in. Let's see how long I last. Like I said, it's <laughs> two, about 40 a.m. Helping to fresh beer, though. So I'm here to you know, hopefully learn some baseball or teach y'all about some baseball. Yeah. And uh, you actually had your, your, the, your partner in crime actually had to take a time out from uh, a, a severe hangover. So she's having a great no, uh, birthday. My, my, my partner kind of fine. I think she's collecting our laundry downstairs right now. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Hitting third. Well, actually, hitting fourth tonight. Hitting fourth Ooh. tonight in our, in our lineup. It is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig. It is Cowboy Jack Durango. I'm back in the saddle again. Out where the beer is cold, where Cowboy Jack smokes that Willie Nelson weed, I'm back in the saddle again, riding with the baseball brew crew, talking baseball with you, where we pass out every night from 15 beers, oh that's right, Back in the saddle again. Yippee tie <laughs> rocking to and fro. Back in the saddle again. Yippee tie yay yay. I go my own way. Back in the saddle again. Woo! Yes. Heck yes. Yes. <laughs> that was what I like to call the Gene Autry special, boys. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Very topical. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Cheers to do you. you. Have a, do you have a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer for us? Because <laughs> that's, that's in that he's the name of that song. Co-wrote. <laughs> that was, co-wrote. Co-wrote, yes, yes, sir. Love it. Love so that's it. where all that money went. We'll talk about <laughs> him later. Yeah, it's very topical right there with some Gene Autry. We'll be talking a lot about Gene Autry this episode. So uh, my name is Michael Mondragon, your humble host, and we have, a, we have a great show. We have a great show. So well, let's get to it. Let's see what everybody is drinking tonight. As tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight? I'm going to start with Kevin Lyon. Oh, 
I is forgot to hashtag do hey, I had to mute myself. I had to hashtag do the research. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so do I cut my promo now and how about English beers? Do I do I go on about that now or should I wait? Yeah. No, absolutely. Get it out of the way, baby. Oh, so chance. I am definitely enjoying my time in this country to say the least. But there's a big but here. The craft beer scene is yeah. American craft beer is so much better. So much better. <laughs> I'm going to say that nicely. I will say that nicely. Okay. Like, I've had a couple, I've had at least two, three beers that I drink. They're IPAs. I drink it, and it tastes like like just your regular, like, brown ale. You would not even know it's an IPA. And if you're an American going to England and drinks craft beer, you're going to see, like, three quarters of the beer that I'm finding at the pubs are like the biggest percentage like five ish five ish percent you know so mm-hmm. i'm like oh oh yeah i'm sorry can you get the button for me please yep you got it <laughs> yes one exactly uh i did find one uh i found a good brewery called brew dog which actually actually has location in las vegas now at the mgm grand they have some good beers but i went to the tesco which is you know, the supermarket, you you know, the big supermarket in England and saw this. It's called Sticky Pop. So I had to get the Sticky Pop. It's um, by a brewery called Magic Rock out of West Yorkshire, Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, England, which I have no idea where that is. But, hey, it's a British beer. So we're going to go with it. And uh, so let's, let me read this here. I'll read you the description. It is a it's supposed to be a northeast. New England IPA. And it says, Welcome back, Sticky Pop. A dank and fruity IPA overflowing with juicy hops, piney and resinous with a satisfyingly bitter finish. A sweet, spicy, and heavy hop bill is combined with our house malt alongside plenty of rye and oats to add that all important body and mouthfeel. Layers of that, layers of fruit goodness is matched with the addition of London fog yeast. You need that London fog yeast, let me tell you. To make it slightly sweet. And smooth finish as the return of a classic. So apparently this is a beer that's been released before. And my friend fought it on the shelf because of the name. But I actually found a North, not Northeast, New England IPA that comes at 7.3%. And it's good. I'm oh, enjoying right. it. Yeah. I would it, much I mean, it's still not an Amer- most American IPAs, but I'll still take it. Cheers. Yeah. And you, you, I mean, you had to get it because it was, you know, an Iggy Pop. You know, uh, yes, reference. So, um, yes, my, my friend found the name, so I had to go for it. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll put over another beer, another one I've enjoyed while I'm here. Do I have any of them left? Yeah, yeah there's, one. there's, there's this one's a good one too that we've been enjoying. Remember, I, if I mentioned Brew Dog earlier, um, they're available in the U.S. Some of these beers, apparently, oh, and this is a it's punk IPA, it's a postmodern classic. And this, any of this is a, only a five percenter, but it's a good solid IPA. You know, you'd have to drink quite a few in order to get. Um, I, I won't. So am I allowed to say pissed? Because that's what they say when you get drunk in, in you know, in England. You can say you're pissed. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, I'm usually pissed at Jack every week on this show, but this week I'm just drunk. <laughs> you're being grammatically correct. Yeah, so, wow. Yes, correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow, stiff. I, I, love you for number one in the fantasy baseball league. Yes. Well, Kevin, uh, you have a lust for life. That it is so. It yeah, is true. Yeah, I do have. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for. Uh, I, I, weird. It's some weird tin for me when I just get drunk constantly, constantly. That's a deep <laughs> cut for the Iggy Pop fans out there. <laughs> All right, Ian, you're up next. Yeah, I have a beer from Prize Brewery. It is called the Miraculum. It is a Midwest IPA, which, to be honest with you guys, I didn't even know was a real thing. You know, we got obviously the West Coast and the East Coast, but I guess West Coast beers are more hoppy, East Coast are more malty. This is somewhere right in between the two. It is a 75 IBU beer with a 6.4% alcohol content. And uh, the reason why I grabbed this, I literally looked at every beer in the store. I tried to find something that was somewhat baseball related or something I haven't had before. I have been to this brewery. It is in North Minneapolis, right along the Mississippi. Cool, big outdoor patio and stuff. But I only had their hazy IPA, which I cannot remember. Maybe I think that middle one there on the screen, I think that's a a rotational one. So I don't think I've had that one either. But uh, this is is not too bad. It looks, you know, very, you know, kind of. Ambery, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm so used yeah. to hazies that 
This looks okay. weird to me, but it tastes very, very good. I'm oh, excited sweet. to drink it. Yeah, and I, yeah, I found looks, this picture. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. It looks a little dark almost for an uh, IPA from here. You know, looks, it does. Maybe that's the what the I West, agree. the Midwest uh, IPA, the qualities of it. It's more caramely, maybe. That's what I'm assuming. Um, but the, it, it, I, I noticed this picture because that was about, like the best picture I could find. And I guess all these beers are um, available at the Target Center. So they were kind of putting that over. Mm. And so um, I know that like a lot of um, regional beers will be in selective places and you can only get those beers there. So I don't know if these were exclusive or not. So um, but obviously that's great that they're um, widely available. Yeah, at least at least in the Midwest or in Minnesota, I should say. I, okay. I do think I, I should have looked. I think they're new within the last few years, maybe. I I, I don't know. I, I've heard a couple radio ads of them, but other than that, you know, they're kind of kind of still up and coming. But very cool. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing that one. That's that's one to seek out when we uh, go yeah, to Minnesota for sure. For sure. Uh, Angelo, you're up. All right. So stemming off of last week's um, selection of the hazy IPA from Made West, um, this brewery kind of piqued my interest a little bit. So wanted to do a little bit of research and this kind of stemmed off our conversation last week around the, the simpleness, I guess, or the quote unquote minimalist design of um, the cans that you see on the photo on the left. Those are their base uh, beers. So the, again, Made West is based out of Ventura, California. So they have their IPA, their hazy IPA, standard and pale. But, um, you know, after digging a little bit deeper, their can designs don't just stop there. So you see a couple of the rotational or seasonal or uh, collaboration beers on the right side uh, of that photo. Um, so I just decided to do a little bit of research and like my mind where it goes from like a marketing perspective is just kind of curious about it. So um, the brewery is based in Ventura, but the founder of Made West Brewing actually came from San Diego, which is a hotbed of, uh, of craft beer. But uh, their art designer uh, or art director or marketing, his name is Scott Chenoweth. So he trained in illustration uh, with an emphasis in clean minimalist design, which kind of explains a lot uh, of their simple designs, as you see in the photos on the left. So I'd love to be able to, to touch base with them and ask them because I'm curious. But the way I see it uh, as a consumer, um, the minimalist design of the packaging on the left really caught my attention in a aisle full of over the top designs. Right. Um, but I can see as a, you know, if, if you're a regular consumer of Made West Brewing Company, you'll know when a new beer arrives with the you know, with the new cans or the more loud designs. So, um, so yeah, so I, my curiosity was piqued a little bit. So I wanted to do a little bit more research on Made West um, and found a lot of uh, beers and actually found a beer that I'm going to drink uh, from Made West next week, which is a, another collaboration beer. But um, yeah, so just my interest was piqued a little bit. So I wanted to do a little bit of research on why the design and, and the different designs that they have. So that's awesome. Oh, very cool. Great angle. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. That's, Super cool. I look forward to the collaboration. I, I is it going to be the one that's on top, or is it, um, or or you know? It's actually, it's, it's actually, it's actually neither of those two. So oh, okay. Oh, good. That's that's even better. So can't wait to hear more about it. All right, Cowboy Jack. The Cambridge English Dictionary defines the thirst trap as a statement or photograph of someone on social media that is <clears throat> in, that is intended to make people who see it interested in the biblical sense. You can see a real-time example of the of a thirst trap by checking out at Beer Baseball on Instagram and Twitter and see our field correspondent and senior research analyst Kevin Lyon and all the pics he's been posting. State 48 Brewery, however, defines thirst trap as a hazy IPA with litter, little to no bitterness. It's a double dry hopped, it's double dry hopped with citra and centennial hops. And that gives this crushable 8% ABV breakfast beer juicy flavors of apricot and oranges. Its light, velvety, soft mouthfeel completes this beer as a trap that you wouldn't expect from a beer this potent. State 48 Brewery was founded in 2016. 
It has six locations across the Phoenix metro area, and each location sports a different gimmick, including dog-friendly patios, pool tables, bowling alleys, full kitchens, pizza ovens, second-floor outdoor patios overlooking the McDowell Mountains in Scottsdale, and the most important location is an 11-minute walk through the beautiful downtown Phoenix Arts District that gets you right to Chase Field. So... If you're an Arizona native or you're visiting our lovely state, do yourself a favor. Stop by one of the six locations of State 48 Brewery, slam a few thirst traps, and tell them that the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Durango, sent you. And cut. Cut. Uh, I will uh, be... I will be sending that clip to State 48 Brewing so we can see if we can get a, at least an, a promotion, promotional deal or endorsement deal. That was well said. I mean, they're going to love that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no. So, so, yeah, they have a – it's called the Thirst Trap DDH Double Dry Hopped Hazy IPA. Uh, juicy, flavorful. For an 8%er, extremely crushable. It's a – it's a seasonal release, so they pop it out a few times a year. I believe it's more of a summer release, but you cannot go wrong with State 48. They Every one of their beers is good. I'm probably going to be doing State 48 deep dive over the next couple of weeks just because nice. all of their beers are so, so, so good. Nice. So, yeah, man, try it out and definitely look for that thirst trap. Um, and it's called State 48 because? Arizona is the 48th state in the union, sir. There you go. Yes. Um, I'm not as dumb as I look, Angelo. Arizonans don't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that might have been in the Baseball for Dummies book, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. It might have been. Might have been. Uh, I'm going to go quickly through mine. Um, mine <laughs> is from a, a, a brewery that, that Kevin and I love, uh, Green Cheek Beer Company. I have the uh, Spinning My Wheels Hazy IPA. It is a 7.2 ABV, no IBU. Hazy, I say, uh, Citra Cryo Strata Hops, or is it Citra Cryo? No, it is. It's it actually four of them. So it's Citra, Citra Cryo, and Strata Hops. This one jams through all the super fresh, bright citrus vibes we're all looking for. Full bodied, yellow haze, smooth hoppy layers. Um, uh, bits of like it, it's like drinking orange juice. <laughs> it's, it's super murky. Wow, look at that! Uh, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> and if if you've ever had um, any green cheek beer, it it is so good. It, it is. Um, that's that's why Kevin is is totally spoiled. It's like when you go from this, and then you you can actually probably taste Kevin like. You just know that it says like five percent. You go, this is not five percent, or you know, the, you can tell like the, the alcohol level in it probably. Man, let me tell you, we we found a place tonight. Uh, it was called like the Craft Beer Company, and on the door it said like largest craft beer on draft in the in United. I don't remember said England, or United Kingdom, and I walk in, there's like twenty beers on draft. So I we have one. I'm like, oh, this is pretty good, and I get this one. It says, oh, it's a seven percent like West Coast IPA. Yes, I almost couldn't finish it. <laughs> really? oh, wow, it was it was just. I'm not going to say the brewery, but it was, it was, yeah. No, wow. wow really, it, I'm, it, I'm, like I'm said, loving that. salty Kevin, man. Kevin was <laughs> looking forward to going over, going across the pond and he gets there and he's like, man, all this beer sucks. <laughs> Take me back to Anaheim, <laughs> no, daddy. You only put over the good, I can put over some good beers. You know, like I said, Brewdog's made some good beers. Um, there's a beer, Gamma Ray, that we really enjoyed. It was made by uh, Beaver Beaver Town. That's one. That was a brewery that we liked. They made some pretty good beers. And uh, but yeah, man, I, I, you yeah. Know, well, I know. British beer yeah, one of the main states. Super right. spoiled so here, was like, yeah, for sure. Craft beer, yeah, craft beer as a ways to go so far from my experience. We'll see. I haven't been to any local breweries yet in town. I got a couple more days. I'm trying to stop by a local brewery and see how they do. But Michael, one thing you'll laugh at too. I'm sorry, Jack. This is just for Michael, more or less. Those, those on this page in this brewery, they were selling. It said American bottles, and one of the breweries was the brewery, and it said from San Diego, California. And I'm, I always want to yell at the person working there. But <laughs> San Diego is not where the brewery is. It's in a town by me called Plus, not Placenta, Jack. Placentia. I'm gonna go back to an old joke from about six months ago. Yes. So it's. <laughs> 
miles from, you know, yes. yeah. <laughs> could be saying Jack, that, <laughs> oh, I got this beer it's from Tucson and it's actually a beer from Phoenix. You, you, know, you, should have, you should have gone full Karen and say, can I speak to the manager? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to spend, you know, 15, 15 pounds or 15 quid, if you will, on a <laughs> little bottle of something that I can get back home. Uh, is that right? Exactly. So uh, I, I'm wondering if if maybe the beer isn't quite up to snuff because of the uh, maybe some different hops that are going into it. Because, yeah, you know, you're you're probably spoiled with, you know, the the hops that are coming out of Portland and yeah. California and yeah, well, the far the farmland here in the States is a little bit yeah. different than the farmland the one, over there in uh, absolutely. England. Yeah, the, the, the hops that get sun. I'm sure there's uh, sunlight yeah. is quite probably, probably pretty hard well, to get. Well, you know, the uh, a big spot for hops in Yakima, Washington, and that doesn't really get the most amount of sun either, to be fair. Oh, interesting. That's, it might be yeah. the soil, though, you know? It could be the mm-hmm. soil. And yeah, and absolutely. actually, there's 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 actually more sunlight up there um, in that area. You know, yeah, when they get, but if you live up there, pretty much you're going to be prescribed vitamin D if you live in the Pacific Northwest. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You might find that out someday, Michael Mondragon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe in 2023, I'll get some more sun. I'm sorry. Game five. Yes. Uh, all right. So let's do it. We're talking about baseball history. Uh, for oh, the- yeah. Sorry. Six. Yes. You're, you guys are going to love this one. This is going to be a, this is gonna be a fun one. All right, so December 6, 1941, this one's for Ian. The Giants select Mel Ott to replace Bill Terry, who has compiled a 823 and 661 uh, record during his decade as the team's skipper. Uh, The team's new player manager will spend all of his 22 years in the majors with the New York franchise, hitting 511 home runs during his Hall of Fame career. Um, do you know anything about Mel Ott, Ian? Oh, I know I messed up because I have his jersey. I should have wore that today. That was, that was <laughs> a mistake. But, I, you know, I, very little. Um, I, do, I do know that I just don't know if that swing is conducive to today's game. <laughs> just no. look at that. Yes. Um, well, I mean, 511 home runs. I know, does not that's lie. crazy. He gets his hack, man. That's obvious. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That is that that is that is a tree chopping swing right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, sheer yeah. power. Yeah, I, I always remember his name because his name was always at the, at the top. At, back when I started following baseball, like his name was at the top of the home run list, but I knew yeah. nothing about him. And uh, but he was like one of those players who was like just one of those man man's man. Uh, definitely, you can just tell. Now, Michael, uh, do you happen to have? I may have to do hashtag the research. Do you know why it's what his full name is? Because it says Mel in uh, parentheses, it, you know, with the quotations. His name is may not might be Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, uh, let's let's look it up real Me- quick. M- Melvin Thomas Ott. There you go. All right, there you nicknamed go. Master Melvin. Okay, oh, I haven't heard that. There you go. No, I, I like. I didn't. I never really put two and two together. It's like in quotations, right? My 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 girlfriend's name is Melissa. And we call her Mel, so it's like it could be right, Melissa yeah. very easily. <laughs> you know, and hey, if you want to, if you're ever in the lovely town of Gretna, Louisiana, you can visit the Mel Ott Multi-Purpose Center in Mel Ott Park. Oh wow! Okay, so that destination <laughs> road trip. Let's road trip it. <laughs> road trip. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a fun one. This is this is why Cowboy Jack Durango uh, could not wait to uh, to to come on tonight. Oh, I think it's going to be. It is. Oh my god! <laughs> December sixth, nineteen sixty, the American oh, League awards the new Los Angeles franchise to Gene Autry, a well-known cowboy movie star who once turned down an opportunity to play in the minor leagues. Gene Autry owned the Angels uh, Major League Baseball team uh, from 1961 to 1998. Oh, but it's only starting here. So I wasn't aware of this, uh, but Autry did not do this himself. He actually partnered with two-time All-American College Football Hall of Famer Bob Reynolds, uh, and they they bought the franchise for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now this is funny because we, we uh, Kevin and I actually have a mutual friend named uh, Bob Reynolds, so it's like it's it's kind of funny that actually they're uh, Bob and Bob Senior. Uh, yeah, so, 
Yeah. And, I'd say you know, you know, the third. Yeah. He, he, so he, this is a, a big deal. And I didn't know this at the time. So I started looking through these pictures, which is a, a, amazing. Um, and this is act, this picture is actually um, uh, at, a, a, is it at an LA stadium called Wrigley field. Feel, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so this is in 61 and I'll, I'll show you some more pictures of this because they actually did tryouts uh, for, for the angel at this time. So <clears throat> wow. this is um, so this is Bob Reynolds uh, in the suit uh, manager, Fred Rigney and general manager, Fred Haney. Um, and uh, actually uh, it was funny because we we're talking about um, uh, Andrew Haney. Uh, he actually signed uh, with someone today. So we're talking about like uh, Mr. Haney from Green Acres. Mr. Haney. Got a rabbit yeah. hole. Um, but th this go. was like a really interesting picture. And they, you can tell they posed it, but the, the, it looks very uninspired. Uh, the, the guys <laughs> both all to each other. <laughs> so what So what year did they buy it? Uh, well, they, they were awarded it in 1960. For $350,000, uh, Yeah. Correct? Yeah, that's that's three point five million dollars in today's money that they yeah. bought oh. a professional baseball team for. Crazy, Jack. We could, Jack. You and I can do that to buy the um, the sweat hogs. Yeah, yeah. Hey, babe, get the checkbook. We're doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so. Gene Autry, let, let's go into it. The singing cowboy. Uh, you know, he he did all these. Uh, Jack, can you tell us a little bit more about Gene Autry? Yeah. All right. So Gene Autry was nicknamed the king of the singing cowboys. And during the time when he was he he's he's done over 93 films, these cowboy movies. When he started out doing these movies, he's only like five foot seven, five foot eight, 160 pounds, so not a big guy. So studios wouldn't get behind him because he wasn't that beefy barrel chested cowboy, but his singing was so popular that they put him in a movie and it was just a hit. And so they made movie after movie after movie. Now he grew up really poor in Tioga, Texas, and he worked three summers uh, picking uh, crops to save up $5 and bought a guitar from a Sears Roebuck catalog. And he was sitting in a train depot just playing his guitar one day. And that's how he was discovered. And it launched his singing career, which eventually went into the movie business. And it just he's got such a great story. He, as we mentioned earlier, he co-wrote Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Um, he owned Challenge Records, which released the hit song Tequila by The Champs in oh, 1958. God. Uh, he starred, like I said, 90, 93 films, 91 episodes of his self-titled television series, and he recorded over 600 songs. <clears throat> he owned a television station here in Phoenix that's now Fox 10, and he would produce multilingual television shows for kids, the most popular of which was called Niños Contentos. Oh, my He's God. A, yeah. He's a decorated World War II flight officer, and he took part in this resupply mission where they had to fly over India and Pakistan and link up with somebody in China. And this mission was so it, it's got a there's a name for the mission. It's called the Hump. Uh, so decorated flight officer. Uh, there's a baseball facility in Mesa, Arizona, named after him. In Griffith Park in L.A., there is the Gene Autry Museum of the American West, which. I definitely is on my to-do list after reading all about this. Uh, he's the only person to have five stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, as you mentioned, he declined an offer to play in the minor leagues. His jersey number, number 26, which they bestowed that number on him because he was the 26th man on the team, was retired by the Angels in 1982. And you know what, man? The major reason that I love Gene Autry is... He wrote this like 10 commandments that he called the cowboy code. And one of the most dear to him was, and I quote, a true cowboy must not advocate or possess racially or religiously intolerant ideals. He was a big proponent of civil rights. He donated, you know, very quietly donated a lot of money to the civil rights movement. He was all about inclusion and and peace, and all of us just being a family, different races, religions, creeds, uh, really just ahead of his time. He owned 
really popular hotels, made a lot of money on the Angels, which he sold his his controlling shares of the Angels to the Disney Corporation, which didn't get transferred to Disney until he died. So insanely interesting guy. I know that the cowboy music isn't for everybody, but this guy's history is well worth the hashtag doing the research. Just a fantastic individual. Wow. That, thank you for that. That was awesome. Yeah. Small clap. <laughs> exactly. Love it. Love it. Hey, and, and, I have a funny Michael, Gene Autry story. Go for it. Kevin. So yes, when I was younger, I lived in a very strict household and I had a Walkman and I had a Beastie Boys tape, which was not allowed. And my dad found it, broke the Walkman, broke the headphones, broke the tape, lost his mind. And I was only a list, allowed to listen to Gene Autry playing uh, Tumbling Tumbleweeds. That was the only song that I could listen to growing up. So it's not for everybody, but... I, you know what, man? He's got a special place in my heart because uh, that was the only music I got to listen yeah, you, to. You think after that story, you'd hate him, actually. Right. <laughs> no, I know, but it's, he's just such a beautiful singer, man. He's such a beautiful man. It's well, well, well worth it and well deserving of all the accolades that he has. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, all right, so, all right can Michael, can I throw in my deep cut, please, just for, for you? It. Go for it. You know, I know he's inclusive mm. because he let Pat Butcher be in a lot of his movies. That's just for you, Michael. You remember Pat Buttram? Yes. <laughs> yes, you're probably the only person in the, in the whole might know who he is. Oh, that cool. was the bumping sidekick if you ever saw the Gene yes. Autry films. Yes. Yeah. No, Pat Buttram. I that that in there. Hey, is he is he in my one of my things? Yeah, there he is. Is that there is that is right. in, the upper, in the upper? Oh, upper that's right? yeah. I think I think that might be him. I don't know. It doesn't say his name there. I don't know. If Pat Buttram's in the list there, but he was in a bunch of his short films. All right. So, so Kevin and I uh, actually, whenever we go down to Palm Springs, uh, oh, yeah. that, that's where the uh, so he was big in Palm Springs uh, for you know bring, he brought the spring training down there. So mm -hmm. this is a field that we go to the California Winter League, and it's that it's the same field. It looks exactly the same as wow. it does today. Same yeah. same thing. Um, but then, you know, when I started going through these pictures, I mean, like this, this is him, uh, in spring training, riding down the streets of Palm Springs. Uh, I mean, it, he was super personable, obviously. Um, you know, Jim Abbott, uh, right here. That's an awesome picture. Here he is with, uh, Reggie Jackson, uh, Mr. Friend of the show. Show. yes, right. Friend, Friend of the, of the show. show. And, and and the thing that I noticed was is like you know the LA Dodgers uh, like these days are seen as like the team that all the stars go to. It seemed like Gene Autry had like all the stars coming out there and 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 doing doing the work. Yeah, and he he he, 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 he spent a lot of, he spent a lot of money chasing the championship. That's right. He really did. And, and um, you know Reggie was you know in Naked Gun uh, just right after this. And uh, but th this is interesting. And and you were talking about how. Um, he had five stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is crazy because I don't even know, like to have a statue of yourself, right? Um, even like one statue, with, that would be enough, right? right? He actually has three in California. Uh, one is at Angel Stadium. Okay. So you can go see this. This is on the west side of Angel Stadium. Mm -hmm. He actually has one in Palm Springs. Now, hold on. Is yeah. that the Gene Autry Airport? Uh, that, I, isn't, isn't, I don't know. It might be. I think the airport in Palm Springs is actually named after him, if I remember right. There is okay. a Gene Autry, uh, I don't know if it's street or avenue, but a major street there is called like Gene Autry Road or something like that. Okay, right, right, right. And then the I mean, third you know, one is at the Gene Autry Museum in Griffith Park. Yeah. So you, you definitely need to go here. I've only been once. It was amazing super amount of i said it, it's the greatest like uh -huh. uh, antique store of all time. it's not a store obviously but right. but there's so many like antiques like, like like relics of history and the time that i went there they had an um an exhibit a michael jackson exhibit where they oh, had yeah. all of michael jackson right. stuff there i was like it was it's an amazing place to go it's right next to the uh la zoo um I, and I, I think in the late yeah. 90s late 90s mid 90s they kind of they split that uh the museum and the, it's half it's a native american museum and yes. then half it is the gene autry museum right and angelo have you been have you been here 
No, I've never been uh, been there, but it definitely sounds interesting. Um, and uh, on top of the statues um, and the street name in Palm Springs, they, um, the exit that they made off of the five in the carpool lane to Angel Stadium is called Gene Autry Way. There you go. Yes. So he and was that, run, he that, that, that runs right into the stadium. Yeah. I don't know why I thought the airport was named for him, but it seems like a loss of the after in Palm Springs. So, but there's the Gene Autry. Oh, I'll, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll tell you about Palm Springs. Uh, there's a reason why uh, Palm Springs, and, and it's, it's kind of funny, it's kind of a, a roundabout story over here, but so. Yes. When I was going through my, my these pictures, I found this. Now, okay, can anybody name anybody except for Gene Autry in this picture? Oh, you should be if I say Gene Autry there. <laughs> let me, Ooh. okay, let me see. Uh, shoot. Is br brother on the left, is that, uh, oh man, I know his face. You should. Sure you do. You should. You, oh, you should. You should too. Oh, wow. You should was the answer. I like that. You know, and I, like, and I, I, have a, and I know the lady I'm, too. I yeah, just don't know their names. <laughs> You've had a lot of beers up to this point. I'll, I'll give you a pass. Um, so you guys did a hazy history on the man on the left. Oh, it's Bobulinski. Yes. Yes. Oh. A oh, no, no, no. There's, there's Dean, Dean, Chance. Dean Chance. So Dean Chance is on the right. Um, oh, so Dean Chance. Um, Won the 64 Cy Young and pitched a no-hitter in 67. And sure. Bo Belinsky is on the left. Uh, Bo Belinsky became a local yeah. celebrity as a rookie with the Angels when he Can won his first four starts, including a no-hitter uh, on yes. May 5th, 1962. But who is the woman? Can, can, I, can I try? Because please. please. Can, someone who apparently he dated back in this season, Jane Mansfield? You're so close. It's insane. Okay, I was gonna, can I go Zsa Zsa? <laughs> it is not Zsa Zsa Gabor. That is I a great Zsa 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 You know, Green Acres had to go there. It's actually Mamie Van Doren, uh, who, yeah, yeah, who was, at, at age oh. 18, a Miss Palm Springs. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Brought it all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah, you go brought it all the way around and she was also in uh, she's actually uh, best known for well actually she's uh miss miss palm springs of course but she's known for actually two things um she was in the rock and roll juvenile delinquency uh, exploitation film called untamed youth from 1957 and then she's also briefly engaged to our own kevin lyon yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. But she she he was too old for her, so she <laughs> broke it off. Yeah, she she couldn't she couldn't stand dating a man that was 132 years old. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Gene Autry. Uh we Thank you, Gene Autry. Maybe I'm just relieved you didn't say the other two things she's known for in this photo. I was like, wait a minute, where are we going for here? I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, hey, Kevin. Mamie yes, Van Doren is still alive. Oh, good! I still have time. You can yeah. see she might not. <laughs> she might not be 177 now. Hopefully. Yeah, I can't dude, ring her up. See if she wants to take a run at the champ, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> it's never right. too late to find yeah. love, babe. Yes, you're. I'm, I'm gonna right. hashtag do the research. Mamie <laughs> Van Doren. Hang on. <laughs> December 6, 1964, Major League Baseball releases its official 1964 batting averages and confirms Twins outfielder Tony Oliva, who finished the season hitting 323, is the first rookie to win a batting title. The recently crowned American League Rookie of the Year finished ahead of Orioles third baseman Brooks Robinson, uh, who had a 317 average and, uh, and also got the MVP award that year. Uh, 19, let's see, December, this is a, this is a fun one. December 6, 1973, the National League owners unanimous, unanimously approve the sale and relocation of the Padres to the nation's capital in time for the start of the 1974 season. They will be known as the Washington Stars. Wow. Okay. And so you're, wait, wait. The Padres moved in 73. Well, they didn't actually. 
because a grocery chain magnate Joseph Danzansky, who offered to buy the team, sees the effort fail due to local legal maneuvers, giving McDonald's co-founder Ray Kroc the opportunity to buy the Padres and keep the club in San Diego. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. So um, that's, that's Ian. How- Arca- I mean, that's insane. Look at the history that we're throwing at you, baby. Look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> we we've gone from Gene Autry to Ray Kroc, McDonald's to singing cowboys, baby. That's what we do. Yeah, and uh, you know, to to learn more about uh, Ray Kroc, uh, the salesman from 2016 with Michael Keaton. Um, yeah, so you can learn more about uh, the great Ray A. Kroc. Um, and, and I remember when he died because it was like in 84 that he died because I remember, uh, they had the RAK on the, on the sleeve, uh, during that, during that season. Uh, and the Padres went to the world series. I think it was more than a year too. I think it was a little bit. Oh, I think it was a couple of years there. Oh, okay. so I, I didn't know at first. Like, what is this RAK thing? I mean, I'm sure yeah. most baseball fans like, what is this? Yeah. It, it was humongous. Like you couldn't, you, you could yeah. see it like super large. It was like um, literally like right here, like R A K in big letters, like on the jersey right. on, the, on, the, on the top of the shoulder there. All right, so th- this is a fun one, and actually inspired a new segment to the baseball uh, brew crew podcast. Michael, yeah. Michael, I'm sorry, I have to stop you for a second. Yeah. From doing the research, Manny Van Doren is alive in '91, but still married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you oh. missed your opportunity. <laughs> Been married since 1970. Wait, what year was it? I don't know. Was married. I, I closed the gate. It doesn't I, matter. I it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. This is a fun one. Sorry. Sorry. So December 6, 2004. Um the Mets and Royals exchange right-handers with starter Brian Bannister going to Kansas City uh, and reliever Ambrio Ricks Burgos heading to the Big Apple. This uh, this is um, Brian Bannister. He is the son of former Major League Southpaw Floyd Bannister, Jack from... Uh, Arizona State University, if memory serves. You are correct, sir. He will win the third play. Uh, he will place third in the AL Rookie of the Year voting, earning nine victories uh, for the last place club. And the 23 year old Dominican will only appear in 17 games for New York, being derailed by injuries and off field incidents. So when I read that, I'm like, oh, they did not list the off field incidents. So what could they be? They couldn't be that bad, right? They couldn't be that bad, right? Please, Please tell us. Please to derail us. his career. Um, so, um, <laughs> dude. So, so, so the 23 year old Dominican, uh, you know, he'll only appear in 17 games. I looked up these uh, off field incidents and I'm glad I did. <laughs> and it inspired a new segment on, which is called Three Strikes. And um, so let's start with strike number one. Okay. <laughs> Strike number one on October, I'm sorry, on September 9th, 2008, Burgos was arrested for assaulting his girlfriend. Prosecutors say he repeatedly punched her in the back, uh, punched her in the back, bit her, slapped her. And on March 12th, 2009, a jury convicted Burgos of the assault. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, that's, that's strike one. All right. Strike one. Okay. How, how do you how, how do you even have a strike two after this? Well, oh, no. On uh, on October first, two thousand and eight, Burgos was indicted on charges of hit and run in his native Dominican Republic. Sources say that Burgos struck two women in his SUV and drove off. Yep. The women oh. later died of injuries. Oh, no, turned himself in on October seventh. Okay, so 2008 was not a good year for this guy. No. So how do you have a strike three after that, Michael? How would you even have anything that resembles a strike three? Oh, no. On August 27th, 
2010, just two years after he did that, but, Burgess was accused of kidnapping and poisoning his ex-wife. Police in the Dominican Republic charged Burgos with kidnapping and attempted murder. You're out of here, dude. dude. Oh, my Boom. goodness. Oh, th- dude, this guy's story okay. is so <laughs> mind-blowing. Like, th- he's a career criminal that dabbled in baseball. Like, it's insane, yeah. this guy's story. Yeah. Oh, he's not him. Yeah, you mean him, right? Correct, sir. Oh, correct. Oh, sir. Thank you. You scared wow. me for a second there, Michael. Do you know? Do you know what he got charged for for the the hit and run? But, the, but that's that insane. People? That is the whole thing. Two people he's out of jail. Like, like, how do you not do that? Right, right, right. Exactly. I'm like, how did? You, how does it two years later? Like, why you shouldn't be doing anything on right. the outside? Exactly. Of the, in society. Wow. So I, I definitely want to mix this in now, like, especially with like hazy history um, or anything else coming up with like, you know, like for instance, like a, a player injury that it's like, the, uh, you know, like Tommy Pham is like a perfect example of that. Like he, he keeps on having these like injuries that like don't la- allow him to pr- progress. Uh, you know, Buster Posey could have like a strike three. It's like different. You mean held him in, back. injuries like, like hurting his hand when he punched jock peterson is that what you're talking about Tony <laughs> there you go. exactly uh john tudor punching yeah. punching the the fan uh like he lost the game uh and punched the fan uh wow. in the 85 world series uh, was uh, uh was it drew Storin, the name of the guy on the washington nationals who broke his hand punching like a locker or a wall right, or something right. I love when I love when I hear pun, uh, pitchers punching stuff. I, that's always yeah. Hunter Strickland did that. <laughs> I, I yeah. like I love it when there's a good punch in a fan story. I <laughs> yeah, Milton Bradley, I, uh, uh, Jack, Jack. Yes, I sir. think he mean. I don't think he means a, a person. Do you mean a person or do you mean a ceiling fan? No, I mean a person. <laughs> or just a box fan. Oh, <laughs> I was asking what Michael meant. Do you mean a box fan? <laughs> no, I mean a person. These guys are acting like these guys are acting like they're working uh, Dutch Mantel in Puerto Rico. They're just like <laughs> they're just like carrying razor blades and punching fans, bro. It's yeah, great. No batteries. That's right. There you go. That's I. Yeah. That's exactly. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the yeah, that's crazy. Here and then punch the wall <sighs> uh, in the playoffs. Good times. All right. So let's do it. yeah, exactly. Rep and review with Angelo Trinidad. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's... <laughs> so uh, I know Ian was super excited about this one. So uh, Angelo, step up. Let's do some rip and review. All right. So today or tonight I have 2022 Panini Prism Baseball Quick Pitch. So this is different from the hobby uh, iteration as far as This one has 10 packs per box, nine cards per pack. We're going to find one autograph, which is a quick pitch exclusive. um, And there's going to be one numbered card um, in every pack. So we're going to be looking for the donut circle prisms, which um, in football and basketball are known as the disco prisms. Um, Yep, right there. Look at that Um, guy right there. And we'll be uh, looking for the uh, case hit one of one black finite. So, um, so I'm excited to open this. I opened up some uh, Panini Prism Baseball on the channel not too long ago, uh, but wanted to save this for um, a special occasion, and that special occasion is today. This so is let's cool. I, I love that they call it the Donut Circle. Yeah, That's me too. So cool. Yeah, super yes. cool. Yes. All right. So here we go. First pack. Let's see what we got. Obviously, we're looking for the top – Rookies from uh, this year's class, so Julio Rodriguez, Bobby Witt Jr., um, etc. So just the base prism design there. Here's what the back of the card looks like. So just going to go through the base here. Javi Baez, Yoan Moncada, Luis Robert, J.D. Martinez. Then we're going to get to the insert here of Sluggers, Austin Riley. And our first numbered card is going to be a Isaiah, uh, Isaiah kiner Falefa. And this one is going to be numbered 44 out of 199. So this is a blue uh, donut circle. 
that guy helped me win a, a fantasy baseball league really? one year when he had catcher eligibility. That was like two years ago. Oh my god! Oh, I was gonna say that. Yeah. that it, not this. Not this year for sure. No, it was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got Kyle Muller, Trevor Story there, John Heasley. We have a rookie of Zach Lothar. Raver San Martin. We have a fearless insert of Rafael Devers. We have a silver prism of, of Ramon Laureano. And we have a red um, donut circle prism of Ryan Feltner. That's numbered four out of 99. Okay, we're getting lower. Yeah, getting lower. Getting so, lower. So, so these these are the Panini cards. They don't have the uh, the logos, right? Right. That's correct. No logos. They don't. They don't have the license. But uh, so they do a good job. Like this, for example, it's you know Hunter Green. It's the back of his jersey. The hats to the side, so you can't really tell that there's no logo. So they do a pretty good job with, most of the time with their photography to work around that. Shows Cincinnati on the bottom instead of the Reds. We're kicking things off with a Hunter Green rookie. We have Jose Siri, Mike Bowman, Eli Morgan, Wilson Contreras, Nicky Lopez, our fearless insert of Jordan Alvarez. That's going to the PC. Cool. I've been, uh, been collecting a lot of Yordi's See, cards. Or they put his arm over the chest where his, yep. the name would be. Yeah. Then we have a Ooh, another fearless. Back. This is a green. That's sick. Of Luis Robert. That one is numbered 46 out of 125. And uh, so two numbered cards in this pack because we're going to get a Bryson Stott rookie donut circle, 108 of 199. That's not a bad one. He had a pretty good year. Yes. I saw his, uh, he posted something. I think it was on Twitter. He did a a Photoshop job of uh, Trey Turner in a Phillies uni. And it was just like, he did it on color, like on paint real quick. (laughs) It, it It was really funny. Love that. Way All to right. go, Justin. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good 699 blister pack. That's a good that's, one. I like yeah. J- Jackson Reitz, Garrett Cole, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Oh, you have his underwear. I, and I do have a patch of a uh, Vlad Guerrero's uh, <laughs> box strap. <laughs> Noah Syndergaard, Colton Walker, Jack Lopez, Peyton Henry, we have our insert of Miggy stargazing and then a blue donut circle of Ryan Feltner. That's my second numbered Ryan Feltner. Gonna say, yeah. <laughs> You're going for the rainbow. Going Come for on. the Ryan Feltner <laughs> rainbow, apparently. Oh, the 101 Ryan Feltner coming out. Yeah. Then you have to do it. Miggy coming back for uh, his last year. So he's he's going to do the pools. Like the world tour. Year. All right, we got Kyle Tucker, Jacob Robson, Yanni Hernandez, Ricky. Texas having, Texas having a good uh, off season so far. Yeah. Zach Short, Omar uh, Nar- Narvez, big unit Whoa. right there. Once again. Ari- Arizona's pride, dude. The big <laughs> unit ski. Yeah. Vidal Brujan, rookie class of Reed Detmers going to the PC. And then we have a red donut circles of Kyle Hendricks, 53 of 99. Nice. Let's see if we can get some numbered cards to 49 or 25 or that one of one would be nice. nice. What was the, the green one? What was that out of? The green one green was to 149. Okay, yeah. We got those out of the way. Let's get those yeah. lower. I want, let's see a newt bar. Sebastian Rivero, yeah. Spencer Torkelson rookie. Disappointing rookie campaign, but still pretty mm-hmm. sought after in the hobby. Robbie Ray, Mike Trout base card. We got Willie Adames. Akil Badu, old school George Brett. Kev, that might be going to you. I see. Yeah. Oh, that's backwards. Oh, it's backwards. Is this our quick pitch auto? 23 and 35, so. Alex Degatti. Super short print. Oh, this isn't even the quick pitch auto. Wow. Wow. So I'm one of the Gotti, one of the got from the Gotti family. Yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> this is a uh, a red donut circles rookie autograph. And we have is this a gold? Yeah, it looks gold. Gold Alex Bregman. That's a nine out of 40. Nice. Weird, weird number. Yeah, good pack. Yeah, for a gold. Weird number. For a gold. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm interested to see if we get a second auto because the quick pitch auto is not that. So what? What? It remind me, what is it? What is the quick pitch? Auto? Quick pitch autos are they're horizontal and it says quick pitch on the top, okay. not, not huh. numbered. Oh, well, bonus auto maybe. We'll see. We'll, so see. we'll see. It's not. Yeah. You know, it's it wouldn't be unlike Panini to to maybe mess something yeah. up. But we'll see. We'll see. Ian, did you see there was a there was a one that somebody opened up National Treasures and I I don't know if it was a. Yeah. But they opened it up and there was nothing in the box. Right, it's like right. high-end box. Oh my gosh. That'd be <laughs> disastrous. Right. So I got a sneak peek of the back card, which I'm pretty excited about. It's a, a super short print, not a case hit, but a super short print insert. But we got Bryce Elder, Kirby Castro. A giant finally. Giant, yeah. Shane McMahon. I dig it. Yeah. Pink socks. <laughs> like Shane McClanahan. <laughs> Or, That's or Rue McClanahan's son, Jack. Don't you know Rue McClanahan's son, Shane? Whoa. What's that? Or Black Burns? Thing? Get your beers ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm peeking at him. That's Roger Dorn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got Jansen Junk. Wow. Oh, my great, God. What a great, great name. name. What a great name. <laughs> and unfortunately, no longer an angel. No longer an angel. You're right. That's stinky. Bad. We got, he got promoted to the major Jack. Hey, you know what, man? After after doing my Gene Autry research, I'm an Angels fan now, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. We got Drew Ellis. Rick- Thank you, and I'm sorry. Nice. We oh, have a elimination. Oh, of there Mike Trout. I don't know if this one's numbered or not. Yeah, oh, that's oh. sick. No, that one's not numbered, but it's a super that's nice. A cool, yeah. Miguel a cool Trucha. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we got a Cody Wilson Silver Prism. Silver so Rook, nice. All right, so this is a card I got a little bit excited about. This is a Uh-oh. stained glass. Oh, blue. those are nasty. Stained glass blue of Bryce Harper. So this wow. one is numbered 30, 30 jersey number, Ooh. 34 out of 199. Nice. Nice. Block, block, block a dude. Love that. Put that in your eBay title. Jack, That's a I thought he's start. overrated. I thought sure. he's overrated. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's a cool. Did you, did you say it's it's not a case hit in prison baseball? Yeah, it's not a case hit in prison baseball, but it's a super short print. I, be, I believe I could be wrong, but it is numbered two, so I don't know. We'll see. I know hey, it's a, you know it's what? a case hit in basketball, right? And and football. Angelo and football too. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be I'm surprised if got Panini. Wasn't, but... I, yeah, I'm I don't think I got Panini. So thank goodness <laughs> we got uh, Johan Durant because. I know I've been panini plenty of plenty of times, as has others. So, oh, Connor okay. Siebold, Marcus Simeon, Kyle Hendricks, Matt Brash, Albert Pujols in the Dodgers uni, oh. Jose Barrios. We have a Manny Machado uh, fireworks insert, and then a blue donut circles of Zach Wheeler, and this one is numbered to one ninety nine as well. There was there was a card uh, Connor something. It was probably first or second that you flipped over. What was his name? Just now, Connor. Connor. Carol. John Connor. Connor Siebel. Just... Connor Siebel. Oh. Let me take a look at that card. Oh. That might be the yeah. Dude must work out. That he is packing some junk in the trunk, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't worry about that's what drew my eye to it, okay? It just, hey. <laughs> In like a second. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. skip a squat day. Is that what you're saying? He does not skip the squat day. He does that Kardashian squat day, bro. He got hey, that BB. You know what, Jack? Like, you know what, Jack? You know how you don't skip? Drinking day. Koi <laughs> <laughs> June Park rookie. There's Camilo. another giant. Camilo. A, he's good. Uh Yvonne Castillo, AJ Alexi, Jack Flaherty, Illumination of Corey Seager. This is a really nice insert. Yeah, yeah that's a cool is. card. Austin Riley Silver Championship Stage. And then uh, it looks like I'm going for the Zach yeah. Wheeler. Uh, Jeez. As well. So Zach Wheeler, yeah, number- 99. Great collation. So I got uh, one oh, pack. Nice. Uh, Let's see this if we is get it. That, let's see if we get that auto. Let's see if we this get is the money pack. Auto. This is the mo- this is where we win our money back, boys. <laughs> All right, Chaz McCormick, <laughs> Ryan Feltner, 
Again, he had to get his base. base. Yeah, yeah, he had to get the base. Byron Buxton, Wait, Thomas, he is Zach Wheeler. Yeah, I know. Manny Machado, <laughs> Logan Webb. There you go. Another That's guy right. that doesn't skip squat day. <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. Kev, how many career home runs? Like 103. Remember <laughs> the number? Like uh, higher uh, or lower? Yeah. <laughs> We got a uh, lumber ink insert of Alex Bregman, and it looks like that Alex Degatti is going to be our only auto of the box. Dude, that lumber ink uh, little logo is super cool. Another Kyle yeah. Hendricks. Don't you have a? a I know. So you got Hendricks, a couple right? Hendricks too. Yeah. <laughs> I got a Kyle all, Hendricks piece. I think. Yeah. You're uh, you're all you about sure? the pitchers. Yeah, Kyle definitely. Pace. You're all about the pitchers. Oh no! I did get the red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a red and a blue. Yeah, you're. Three different All your pictures. inserts are pictures, I think, right? One ninety nine. Um, wow. numbered price. inserts. Minus, hey, minus the numbered, price. except for price. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Angela, grab a couple of those that are the same, or just grab those that red and blue. What's? Did you say anything about the tier on the back of that card? It said tier oh, two I didn't. on it. So what this is, one is tier right? two. What? I just, I'm just curious. What red the, is tier three. Oh, I didn't know they had tiers. To be oh honest, my God. That, yeah, totally. This one, uh, this one does not have a tier on it. So huh. interesting. So, so I so, got so, so six of my uh, ten inserts are, are numbered cards with the same player. But God. I mean, I guess we, I guess we made up for it with this with this Bryce Harper here. That is that Harper is. Cool. Yeah. I'd be Older surprised Ray. if that's not a case hit. And like, the tier I, thing isn't it, isn't that a tops thing? That's that they have one product with it with tiers. Yeah, is it? Uh, um, that's gold, a gold, gold label? label. Yeah, gold, gold label. label. Right. There you go. And I've never seen that on uh, Prism. Yeah, yeah so this this very well may be a case hit, but um, hopefully you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the uh, with the with the Bryce Harper uh, low numbered and the Alec Bregman uh, forty. The gold is kind of color match too to the, the Astros unis, yeah. but um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Panini Prism design in general, um, and I know a lot of people knock on Panini Prism baseball because it's not licensed, but you know I don't have an issue with it and. Uh, um, I'll be opening more Panini product uh, this Saturday on Rip and Review. Um, so make sure you guys tune into that 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another edition of Rip and Review. I'll be opening up 2022 Panini Mosaic Choice. And spoiler alert, and this is some clickbait to watch the video, uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'll be pulling on that episode um, the biggest card I've pulled to date on Rip and Review. Um, probably not quite enough to get a, uh, quite good enough to get on uh, Ian's top 10 sports cards poll of the week. But my initial reaction would lead you to believe otherwise. Cause <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to see that. Yeah. yeah. Good Ian, stuff. Maybe, so Ian, maybe he, maybe he slides in there. Ian. I'm just saying. <laughs> Angela, whatever you do, click make the heck out of that video. A nice thumbnail. Do what you got to do. Get yeah. the eyes. Get, we'll, just we'll get people up. to click on it. That's all you got to yes. do. Yeah. 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 So I, we can do that. The, our biggest card to date, or whatever it is. Right. You know, exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm becoming yeah. a fan of the, I'm becoming a fan of the Panini cards because they're not licensed. Like those dudes figured out a way to make money off the MLB <laughs> without shoveling money into that evil demon corporation, the wow. MLB, <laughs> that just destroys yeah. their fans. Yeah, and and this I I think this conversation comes up pretty frequently in the hobby that the Panini like the premium lines are look so much more better than tops premium lines, you know, and it's just, they're, they're not licensed. So we'll see what happens now with um, what fanatics does with in their partnership with tops and being the um, having the, the sole rights here in a couple of years. But I mean, even look what, you know, Panini did for the WWE trading card game. So, right. um, you know, you're, you're seeing people pull these, you know, Roman Reigns super factors. These, I think, you had a rock one of one on uh, top ten uh, six, right. months, six eight weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah, I love the Panini design. Yeah, there's no licensing, but I mean, if you're a fan and this, you know, just whatever you know looks good at least to me. So awesome, yeah, man! I think they look great. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna let uh, Kevin get some rest. He looks like he's he's a, he's definitely on fumes at this point. But uh, we went, did want to mention. Uh, unfortunately, we talked about him last week. The great Gaylord Perry, unfortunately, died uh, in between uh, last week's shows and this show. Um, uh, played for, started with the Giants, 
Um, went to the Indians, Rangers, Padres, Rangers again, Yankees, Braves, Mariners, Royals. Was a part of the Pine Tower incident. Uh, was on multiple David Letterman appearances. His uh, Giants number 36 retired. He's on the Wall of Fame for the Giants. He's in the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians Hall of Fame. A member of the Hall of Fame in 1991, getting 77 uh, percent of the ballot. Uh, Gaylord Perry, an obvious, and he's also at the end of the, uh, I say at the end of the year, it's at end of this month, actually, we're going to have our diamond icons, uh, election Gaylord Perry was in, um, as a candidate, he wasn't elected last year in our, in his first year of eligibility, but he also, he can be in two categories, but I wanted to put it out to the, 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 uh, the panel here, and Ian, I want you to be a part of this. I, actually, I'm, I'm going to invite you right now. Would you like to be a part of the Diamond Icons? Uh, we actually had um, from Halo Haven, we actually had a, a somebody from the outside in, but we'd love to have you if you'd like to be in the voting for the Diamond Icons for 2022. Yeah, I'm in. Come okay, in. perfect. So here's yeah, the decision. Do we put Gaylord Perry in as a he he goes into the diamond icon nominees where he actually has to fight against other people or do we put him in the legacy we actually legacy. have uh, a, a matt sinister is up and is going to be in there but uh, we we have another spot is gaylord perry does he go in the legacy uh, because he's he's out he has to make it somewhere in our um and i don't want him to, i don't want him to fall off the ballot either he's, he's not fun. I think it's he's inevitable. He, he, he's, he's got to be in. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. do we put him in the legacy or we put him in the pool to legacy. fight against other people? No, let's, let's legacy this man. Put him in. Yeah. Let's so he's in the legacy. It is done. It is. Uh, so, you know, salute Gaylord Perry. Oh, we hardly knew ye. Yes. Rest in power for sure. Oh, I, I definitely knew you. I definitely yes. <laughs> yeah. He's um, playing stickball in the in the yard. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe too soon, but if if I die, do I get to be a diamond icon? Maybe. We'll 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 put you on the ballot. Maybe. Yeah, we'll okay. See. We have to put it up to vote. <laughs> well, because I was supposed to die whenever I had bubble gum on the show, yeah. so Listen. I'm still here. Sorry, <laughs> hey, Kevin. No, it, no spoilers. Yeah. Kevin, if your death gets us to a thousand subscribers, there you go. Here we go again. Boom! Yeah. You're a legacy pal. You're <laughs> in. Okay. Thank you. Well, well deserved. Thank you. All right, Ian. Please plug away. This picture is so crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I do my thing over on YouTube. I, uh, I open some cards with my wife every Wednesday and wife, wife, wife pack wars. I don't do too well in those, but we have a grand of a time. So if you guys will join us in watching that, greatly appreciate it. And then every Monday morning, bright and early for you guys, I put together the top 10 sports card polls of the week. I scour YouTube and I have a whole bunch of people that help me out. So uh, it, it's fun to put together. It does take a lot of time, but it has great... Uh, great you know support from you guys out there and uh I, I i like doing it so uh yeah that that's what i do here on youtube and thank you guys yeah. for again for for allowing me to join it's always fun you know i you know i'd be here anyway so i might as well uh yes. you know be a part of it if if i'm allowed so thank you so much yeah thank you so yeah. much we enjoyed it go kevin oh, oh no i have to go <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Oh, wow, I gotta go. Uh, well, I have to go. You mean I have to leave? No, 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 no. I got something to say. You're delirious. It's only, it's only 3 43 a.m. where I am. I mean, what? You can have a nice gonna... English breakfast. Uh, hey, well, we're here on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Um, yeah, plug away, guys. Uh, end the show out right. Yeah. All right, I'll go first. If, if you care, at all, if you want to see what I'm getting into in London, follow me on in, and Twitter and Instagram at Lock and Lowell, L O K N L O L L, or just go to our Instagram and Twitter, Beer Base, Beer Baseball on Instagram, Beer Baseball underscore, because some other guy got the name first on Twitter. Wah! To see, and if there's anything beer related, I'll make sure I post stuff there about my adventures here in London. I have uh, a little over 40 hours to go. Wow. I'll go back to the U.S. Thank you. 
Nice. Hope you have, you have a rip and review this Saturday. We had a big card. Big. We're going to yeah. plug away big, on that one. Yeah, biggest biggest poll yet on rip and review. Tune in this uh, Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2022 Panini Mosaic Choice Baseball. If you haven't had a chance, go check out last Saturday's video where I participated in the 2022 Tops MVP buyback program. Um, so that was a super fun video to put together. Um, got had a couple fun rips uh, at the end of the video. Uh, go back and check it out. But yeah, I appreciate you guys' support and uh, thanks for uh, letting me uh, do my thing here tonight on Rip and Review. Yeah, super fun. Cowboy cool. Jack. Uh, follow me at Confirmed Outlaw on Twitter. Uh, Kevin and I do a hazy history live on Instagram sometimes on Sundays. We've been trying to do Fidel <laughs> Castro for over a month now and uh, i yeah two months. The, oh. you do it sunday you want to do it sunday <laughs> let's do it sunday let's do it sunday. let's do sunday um two o'clock gotta, two, two o'clock works for me i gotta i got a an, a, a late night with the family at the zoo lights that night so we got to do it do it early that that's fine so let's do 2 p.m that's 3 p.m your time is that okay perfect perfect yeah. Check out that. So we see if the Castro curse lives on. We're going to try to break the Castro curse this Sunday on Instagram live at beer baseball. We're going to delve into the seedy side of Fidel Castro and baseball. Wait, wait, who Fidel Castro was a bad guy. You're telling me. No, you know what? The Fidel Castro I know. He was a great guy, but I mean, apparently big time baseball player. He is a baseball player. Very sought after. All right. Very sought after. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you next Tuesday for another Baseball Brew Crew podcast. Thank you, Cowboy Jack. Thank you, Angelo. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Kevin. Go to bed, Kevin. We'll see you next week. Good night, everyone. Take care. <laughs>